Let's get into it now. A spoiler-free movie review of Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And right at the top of this review, I would like to say, historically, I do not like prequels. Because it's a lot of fleshing out a story that I don't really care about. In this case, I will say, it proved me wrong. But we are coming from this from two different perspectives because you read the book and enjoyed it. Mostly. What, how'd you feel about the book? It was hard to get into. I'm also trying to remember when I read it. It came out like 2020. So probably beginning of 2021. And I don't remember it being a real page turner. Like I remember having to motivate myself to finish it. And I loved the original Hunger Games books. So did I. Loved them. One of the few franchises turned movies that I read the book and went to see the movie. And I finally got the thing what people say is like the book is so much better because it so, goes so much more in depth. You did read the Hunger Games books? Oh, yeah. I read every oh. single one. I read them like back to back. Learned it's like the only new. time that's ever happened that I got so excited about a book series that I needed to start the next one immediately after finishing the first one. Hasn't happened since. I didn't read this one because, honestly, I'm dumb, and the book looked too big and intimidating. It was and, not that big. Oh, it, it was a thick book. No, it was not. It was a big book. I have fatter books on the bookshelf. Look at the graphic novels I read now. <laughs> they are paper thin. Okay, one of them is not paper thin, so that argument doesn't help yourself. But I, I'm just, I just couldn't convince myself that I wanted to jump back into this world. Again, I don't really love prequels. Oftentimes, they deal with... A small slice of the story of, like, this is why this person is mean. I was going to say, you don't have the original cast of characters that you fell in love with. Yeah. I think that's the magic of the Hunger Games. And you're living in that same world. So I was like, okay, I'm just not... It was going to be mediocre. Even from the trailer, it didn't really win me over. But what this movie is about, it's the origin story of President Snow. They're going into the 10th Hunger Games where... The ratings are starting to decline. People aren't watching them. And if people don't watch the Hunger Games, it takes away the point of the reason why the Capitol does it, to keep everybody in line. So they are trying to find a way to make these games more appealing to people. It's kind of where they start the mentoring process of working with one of the tributes to get them likable, to get eyeballs onto the screen. So it's the origin story of how the Hunger Games came to be, what we know whenever Katniss was involved, but also President Snow before he was president and his rise and going from being a normal person to being the evil person we know him as later. Overall, what I really ended up enjoying about this movie is the way they depicted the actual hunger and the scarcity of food and the reason people were going into these games is because of having a fighting chance and also just the depiction of these characters of, I feel like in that first movie of the original one, they kind of went into it scared unless they were in like the tier of like District 1 or District 2. They were all kind of frightened and going along with it. But here they were violent. They were angry. They were lashing out. And I feel like that's a much more accurate representation of what somebody in this position would be like. So I like that it had a bit of a more gritty feel to it. And aside from that, the part that, really won me over was the action that was so much more brutal. It stressed me. It This movie felt more stressful. Like I will say I didn't enjoy that part. I just felt like my blood pressure was rising the whole movie. And it was surprising to me how bloody this one ended up it was being. brutal. Like some of the kill scenes were even like jarring to me that if this movie had an F word in it, it probably could have leaned towards a rated R like rating. And I think the reason they did that is because this movie was very much for the fan base of the hunger games. And we felt that going into this theater, which was surprisingly packed and that that felt like there was a passion there for hunger games that I didn't really know still existed. So I feel like this movie was made knowing that these fans of the original ones are now about 10 years older a little bit more mature, we can kind of go there a little bit more than we could 10 years ago of showing the brutality of the Hunger Games. So I found that really appealing to me. Yes, There was, was a youngest child in the row behind yeah. us. <laughs> I think this kid was maybe eight or nine. So I feel like in a good way, it gave the hardcore fans what they wanted 
and didn't really worry about alienating the people who were just maybe casually watching this movie. So it being a prequel, I feel like you still have to know and have watched those movies going into this one because they don't spend a whole lot of time explaining what the Hunger Games are. There are a lot of references to the original movie. We go back to the Hanging Tree song in this movie. Like small little references that song to Katniss. Is gonna be oh, I've been singing it ever since we watched it. Duck in my head. I was are like, you? this is like are you? Are you coming, coming to the, the tree. You were talking it's about like, the dance remix. No, the they did. dance remix that like infiltrated pop radio. Which I forgot how impactful these movies were when they came out. So it kind of reminded me that there is a big fan base there that was itching for a Hunger Games movie because really I wasn't. And I love those movies. I love the books. But going into this one, I just had no real expectations, so I was surprised of how much I ended up enjoying it. So how did you feel about it overall? Meh. I felt pretty meh. Really? It just didn't have the appeal. I think, too, like you're supposed to understand why Snow is the way he is. But it was hard to like not hate him from the beginning, knowing what he becomes. And then they had his tribute, Lucy Gray. And I get that her like people are a singing people. Okay. There was too much singing. There was so much singing. And I just, it was too much. Even for it being called the songbird, it was too much songbird for you. Too much song. Not enough bird. Just too much song. That did make me think the... One thing I did not enjoy about this movie is it felt like two separate movies crammed into one. There were three parts. It would be like part one, part two, part three. Mm -hmm. It felt so disjointed. And then I kind of felt like the ending was a little rushed. I feel like those first 90 minutes, if that was just a movie, I probably would have loved it. But it probably wouldn't have told the entire origin story that they needed to tell. And obviously it's going based off the book. But that felt like a very complete 90 minute movie to me. And then it really just shifted after that. And then, like you said, yes, the ending was just very rushed. M- almost matter of fact that you didn't really see the development of Snow like I was expecting to see. Yeah. I will say, though, Viola Davis, give her an Oscar. She was so good in it. Of course, I'm going to compare it to the original ones. But there is no replacement here for Jennifer Lawrence and having oh, no. two real strong leads in a movie. Like the two leads here just don't wouldn't really carry a franchise like they did with Katniss Everdeen and PETA in those movies. So I know those movies focused a lot on the love story and that whole Star Cross Lovers plot line and everything that develops in their relationships that was a big driving force in those movies. So I don't really feel like they could continue making more Hunger Games prequels and spinoffs that would have any kind of resemblance of the original franchise because as far as just straight on actor performances, it was so much better in those original movies. And aside from Viola Davis and Jason Schwartzman, who I thought he was, was so good, he was funny. And I just it just reminds me that he can do anything quirky so well. Yeah. So aside from... Hunter Schaefer was also phenomenal as Tigress, Snow's cousin. Yeah, I feel like overall... The supporting characters The supporting characters are probably better. (laughs) But the thing that excited me too was my biggest criticism with the first Hunger Games movie was that they didn't spend enough to make it look good. This one looks so much better. The actual arena where the Hunger Games take place, I just feel like even the costume design was more thought out to make it more cinematically appealing. You also probably have a bigger budget, though, because they knew how successful the first three were. So you probably are banking on that success and able to throw more money. And like you said, it's, what, a decade plus later? The visual effects have changed. The ability to make movies look better have changed. Yeah, they didn't have the money to invest in that first Hunger Games movie to do it justice visually, I feel like even some of the special effects in that one, uh, really throughout that entire franchise, don't really hold up t- to today's standards. If they were to remake those movies now, they would look entirely different. So that's also what excited me about this movie, is I feel like the world of Panem finally looks like how I envisioned it while I was reading the book. So visually looks so much better. The action is so much better. The acting is still there, I just think as far as the main characters here, even though it's a President Snow origin story, nobody was as likable as Jennifer Lawrence was going to be. There was no one to grasp onto and root for. So overall, what would you rate the movie? I would give it three out of five Jabber Jays. 
a lot lower than I was expect. I thought you were more excited about this one than I would be. I was, and then I didn't like it as much as I oh, thought I would. I love to see somebody let down from a book. <laughs> Do you feel that, though, that you always like the book more than the movie? Yes, except for Where the Crawdads Sing. Book and I've talked about that on here before, that I liked the movie better. I had lower expectations going into this movie, and I feel like this movie had me from the very beginning and sucked me in with the action, sucked me in with all of the visual aspects that I ended up really liking it. If it would have just been that first 90 minutes, I probably would have given this movie a 4.5 easily. I do think at one point it kind of loses its footing and goes a little bit all over the place, and you really have to pay attention to the development of Snow, which I feel like could have been executed a little bit better. But overall, I love this movie way more than I was expecting. I give it a strong four out of five guitars. I think if they would have... Not the guitars. Not the guitars. If they honestly would have taken out some of the singing and not focused so much on <sighs> that character, I feel like it would have been a stronger movie. I'm happy with, if this is the last thing we see from Hunger Games, I'm good. Unless she decides to write another book that focuses on maybe like the very first Hunger Games, which I thought is what this book and movie was going to be. I think that would be interesting to know about that history. But I just think you'll start to lose all of these recognizable characters that you learn from watching all the other movies, reading all the books, that it would just feel like an entirely different movie. Because this one, I felt like it was going to be a little bit of a stretch, but it actually worked for me. That is our thoughts on The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. There you go.